The murder of NCP leader and former Maharashtra minister Baba Siddiqui has shocked the entire nation. He was shot outside his son MLA Sishan Siddiqui's office in Khairnagar in Bandra, which is one of the busiest areas in Mumbai. Though he was rushed to the hospital, he was declared dead. The killing has been linked to the Bishnoi gang led by Lawrence Bishnoi, who is currently in Sabramati Central Jail in Ahmedabad. A person claiming to be a gang member posted on Facebook saying the gang was behind the murder and it was due to his closeness to Bollywood actor Salman Khan. But the police have not yet confirmed if the post is real. Several people have been arrested and investigations are still ongoing. In today's interview with senior journalist Mohammad Wajihuddin from the Times of India, we will discuss Baba Siddiqui's murder, the involvement of organized crime in Mumbai and much more. Thank you so much, sir, for joining today. And firstly, that does it seem like Baba Siddiqui's murder was it only because of his closeness to Salman Khan, or could there be other reasons behind it? You see, so far what has appeared in the press, because uh, you know we know whatever has appeared in the press in the different media platform that this murder was done by uh, Bishnoi gang. Mm -hmm. And uh, the Bishnoi gang could have uh, killed him. We don't have the confirmed, but but we are going by the whatever appeared. Mm -hmm. And uh, probably he even claimed. So the, the reason that he could have uh, get him killed is only because of uh, Baba Siddiqui's closeness to Salman Khan. Because there is no other reason. Because uh, I don't think uh, Vishnoi has any other sort of enmity with uh, Baba Siddiqui. He has nothing to do with Baba Siddiqui. He has never issued any statement against Baba Siddiqui, not even threatened him uh, directly or indirectly. Uh, so, uh, and we all know that uh, Baba Siddiqui, uh, being a very popular leader and being a Bandra boy, and both Baba Siddiqui and Salman Khan grew, you know, they know. They knew each other for a long, long time. Mm. Probably uh, they were in teenage years because they all, they both grew in Bandra. And uh, all his life, uh, both lived in Bandra and they were very close. And one of the events, the, the annual events uh, that was very popular in Bombay and which was attended by who is who in the city was this uh, star uh, dinner. I have written a piece on that, that how this iftar dinner drew uh, famous and the rich from across the society, you know, uh, from politicians to film stars to Bollywood to all sort of celebrities. And especially, uh, obviously, Salman Khan and Shah Rukh Khan were the, the main uh, figures over there and they were eagerly awaited. So this was in public domain that Baba Siddiqui was close to Salman Khan is known to everyone yeah. and it was the public demand. So mm -hmm. if he, uh, Vishnoi, got him killed for this only reason, many people don't believe it, that this could be the only reason that, you know, uh, he could have been killed. Because Baba Siddiqui being a politician and a builder, because he built many, uh, you know, high rises uh, in, yeah. in Bandra side, Bandra West, where he lived. So he had lot of interest in real estate as well and the development what is called the sra you know slum re rehabilitation scheme yeah. through that scheme the many slum areas are rebuilt as a as a, you know a proper building so he had interest in that so uh, it is not clear whether it is the job of uh, vishnoi gang only or there's something else also when we say something else that means his property, interest in property and, and redevelopment. In the real estate. That, yeah, like real that. estate. So you know that may, there are many people, many players who are interested in real estate. So there's okay. not just one individual. Okay. And whenever the government wants to redevelop a slum area, there are many, many people who want to have a, you know, interest in that. So that could be a rivalry. That could, this could be a, also a reason of is a business rivalry, those okay. who wanted the same kind of uh, uh, real estate to mm -hmm. redevelop and Baba Siddiqui being his himself a very influential leader. He was for a long time, he was in Congress, he was MLA, he was a minister 
and then he joined NCP. So he was very prominent leader yeah. in the NCP. And his son is still an MLA, MLA from the same area where he was got he was killed. So this could be another angle also. And uh, I think cops are also exploring that angle, whether it was real estate. But so far, whatever we know is that is what Bishnoi can be got him killed. Yeah. So as of now, if we just say it looks more likely because of his closeness to Salman Khan, but there are very high chances that there could be business rivalry yeah, yeah. that's into play as well. Also, yeah, yeah. talking about closeness to Salman Khan, first thing that I want to ask is, why is the alleged killing of these two uh, black bugs, which had happened back in 1998, a long time ago, yeah, is so prominent right now? I mean, he has been recently, at least uh, Salman Khan had received two, three threads. He had, uh, they were firing outside his house. It's gaining a lot more popularity now. Why is that happening? Yeah, you, you, you see, you rightly said that this black bug killing issue is over 20 year old, you know, more than uh, 20 year old. And uh, and I think for this reason only, if Vishnoi gang is uh, after his life and trying to kill him or eliminate him. Uh, so it turns, uh, okay, there the Vishnoi community does have sentiments yeah. attached with black bug. We hmm. all know that. Yeah. But is this the only reason why Salman Khan is on his target? It's again, again, they are they are dogs uh, because you know he has been uh, kind of there have been a threats. They were firing. There was fighting, and there was also when his father uh, Salim Khan, who is a very very prominent uh, you know script writer. Uh, so very decently every day I know that he, every day he goes out and he sort of, you know, uh, has a walk on yeah, the promenade. On, West on the Bandha, Bandha yeah. West promenade, promenade, you know, where he's very close to his house. Mm -hmm. So he goes to the seafront and he has been part of the initiative to clean the beaches also near his house. So every day, this gentleman who is uh, over 70, he walks, he walks down that area and he goes down. Now there was a guy who came on the bike and he, kind of, you know, he played actually a prank. He yeah. said that Vishnu gang ko bolu kya? You know, something like that. And his, yeah. his security was increased. The other day, I was walking down the same street. I was going to some hotel for some other uh, kind of meeting. And I saw that, you know, many policemen, I mean, uh, at his house. Yeah. That happened, that was before this incident, before the murder of, uh, you know, Baba, uh, Baba Siddiqui. And security has been increased around Salman Khan's house also. So, so, the, so this man, I mean, Salman Khan has been under target from the Bishnoi gang yeah. for, for two decades. And uh, so I, I don't know uh, why this issue is dragging on so much. And even if, you know, someone commits a crime and uh, by the time, you know, you, you tend to forget and forgive also. That you know, okay, it happened. He might have done it, but uh, but uh, by the time you know, as the time passes, people tend to forget. Yeah. But I don't know why if this issue is still alive, and uh, Vishnoi gang uh, is after him, and uh, he wants to take revenge. So so it is. It's very difficult to explain unless unless some uh, you know deeper investigation is done, yeah. and someone really goes into the depth of the issue and uh, comes out with the real truth because we don't have direct a statement from uh Bishnoi because mm -hmm. lawrence Bishnoi is behind the bars he is inside jail yeah. from tihar he was last statement to uh, that he gave he has been clearly saying in the recent past he did say that he wants to kill salman khan that's his life aim like i think the last interview he did give that statement very specifically yeah. But after that, yeah, we have not heard directly, very clearly as of now, why he's still following this case. Yeah, so he is not giving explanation that, you know, uh, he says that because he killed Black Park, yeah. so he wants to take revenge. But he should have come out with some explanation, you know, that uh, after so many years, uh, still, you know, people tend to forget and mm -hmm. forgive also. So why, you know, Salman Khan is still his target? He should have come out with some explanation, but uh, 
we don't get that yeah. and he is hiring people because we know that you know two boys who came on a yeah. motorbike and they were also arrested for the fighting outside his house so all these things keep happening uh, so it's quite uh, uh, disturbing for citizens for common man also because after all it's a security issue you know it's a law yeah. and order and in a city like bombay if you yeah. don't feel safe and if forget about common people if a you know influential It's leader like like yeah. like uh, like uh, uh, siddiqui like baba siddiqui like a prominent bollywood star uh, who has millions of followers like yeah. salman khan is not safe does not feel safe then who else is so yeah. this is the question mark for the sec for our security apparatus also and law and order agency also so talking about this thing that why was uh, why was baba siddiqui only uh, you know attacked i mean though the bishnoi gang they have said that due to the closeness and one of the reasons that they mentioned in that facebook post was the fact that it was the death of anuj the uh, one who was accused uh, for in the bike uh, in the accident uh, near salman khan's home but salman khan has other close associates as well so mm -hmm. what could be the explanation for attacking only baba siddiqui and not any other person for this that's that's this that this is very valid question and here in media and otherwise also lot of people are asking this question because if you want to harm salman khan yeah. then as baba siddiqui is was his friend not yeah. his relative Yeah, you know, his family so would have been one of, his, one one of, one of his most friends. assumed. Yeah, the yeah. more most uh, closest friends. So yeah. there are many many friends. You know, Salman Khan being a very popular Bollywood star, he has many friends, uh, and in Bombay and Bandra itself. So why only Baba Siddiqui? Yeah. So this is the this this angle. Uh, you know, raises many questions. That you know why Baba Siddiqui just because he was close to Salman Khan and that's why he was targeted and killed. There could be some other reasons as well. You know, so 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 this is why the property issue, the real estate mm -hmm. issue, the rivalry, maybe political rivalry or business rivalry also comes in. So so the the the, the angle should be on an investigation should be on those areas also. they should try to explore those areas also not just you know keeping saying yeah, that yeah. you know this was because of uh uh the black you know, box killing and sabotage yeah bishnoi yeah. bishnoi gang uh, act and uh, just because he was close to you know uh, siddiqui also i want to ask you one more thing uh, why can't the mumbai police get lawrence bishnoi's custody because as of now he is in amdabad jail sabarmati jail So why is Mumbai police finding it so hard to get the custody when there are so valid grounds to investigate? Yeah, that's that's true, and uh, I have heard and we have read in the papers that you know the Bombay police has been trying it's hard to get him, uh, but somehow I somehow in the ministry uh, this is not progressing. Their 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 request to get him his custody is not yeah. being processed. I don't know why. who is who is stalling it who is stone walling it but uh, the valid there is a valid question and valid reason to have him here because there are cases against him mm -hmm. and especially now after murder of siddiqui so he should have been brought here and the bombay police has the reason to question him you know interrogate him that that his involvement why he was he killed him mm -hmm. who were the people because unless the bombay police gets him his custody and interrogates him you cannot get, get to the bottom of the case you cannot understand the and know the the real mastermind who was behind him on whose instruction or was there somebody else also who instigated or who told bishnoi that you get him killed you know what there a larger plan yeah. so all these facts the bombay police wants to know but that can happen only when he is brought here which is not happening now who is not allowing it who is stopping it we don't know so unless unless somebody comes out and uh, either bombay police will never say that who is the stopping it is an yeah. internal matter 
so unless it's not but this is very logical thing and this is very straightforward question that if a crime has happened in another state and mm -hmm. and the and the accused is lodged in some uh, jail in another state so he should have been brought here and he should be asked question so mm -hmm. this is not happening so does it seem like even the government is trying to protect or rather not let the investigation happen to the fullest could it be that because we know vishnu gang has made many threats clearly and now at least as per the facebook post they are taking the uh, uh, you know they're taking the ownership of the murder and the custody is not being given to the police so does it show government's lack of intent uh, actually it, it is quite disturbing and it boggles our mind that you know a criminal accused of the murder who is behind the bars and he is coming out with a you know fb post and he is taking claim of mm -hmm. murdering you know the musewala or somebody else and now baba siddiqui so how he has become so powerful nobody yes. is is more powerful than the state indian yes. state is more much more powerful it, it is equipped with so many laws it has the, its own mechanism so how a gangster has become so powerful that he is he is uh, giving threats issuing threats from behind the bars and he is claiming so this is one question another question it also raises many questions on how the government machinery functions yeah that why can't uh, government can go cracking down and mm -hmm. and government can sort it out you know that uh, here is a is a law and that the law will take its own course so a gangster cannot be so powerful so uh, you know uh, so it has so much courage and temerity to challenge the, the, the government machinery and and uh, challenge the law and order and telling the world that here i have done it i have got it done and i will do uh, you know again with some yeah. yeah because there's a the, there was a news that you know uh, this uh, comedian uh, munawar 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 Farooqi. Farooqi. yeah so Manu, munawar faruqi has also got threat calls yeah, I mean, exactly. he also get threatening hmm. so the police cover has been given to him so there are so many others on his target so this is the this should have been the job of the government and the, the the administration to go cracking down and find out the motive behind it that mm -hmm. who is the mastermind why it is happening all these things can be done easily but this is the the government job and the government should be really doing because i know that uh, yesterday uh, uh, baba siddiqui's son dishan siddiqui yeah. who is also an mla he met joint police commissioner today there is a report that he met uh, devan fadnavis who is the deputy chief minister as well as the home minister so he is though obviously he is in grief he is yeah. in pain because of having lost his father uh, and he is so young and he, he was perhaps the youngest mla when he was elected to the legislative assembly 5 years ago and he is so young and he lost his father so he is going out and the meeting of senior officials meeting mm -hmm. now the home minister also mm -hmm. and let us hope that something more effective comes up out of all these exercises and we see that justice is done uh, unless justice is done and the, the man behind it is brought to book and is punished i think i think people will not have that much faith in law and order machinery so it's good for the government also to ensure that you know the, the the people here in the city feel safe and those who have been uh, wrongly uh, punished or for no crime of their, their own and and the, the, so the criminals and the accused mm -hmm. should be brought to book and and that's how we will feel safe also so there are two things uh, that i want to further ask you a uh, first you mentioned that how it's not possible to have been committing threats and at least committing even murders being the mastermind behind this murder from inside a jail and he has been in the jail for a decade now 
so yeah. uh, if we look back back into the 90s when mumbai had that underworld organized culture and based on your experience as well in reporting those crimes uh, can you tell us is it possible like even then was the pattern something similar where if a gangster is in the jail we could operate i mean we can understand that they might have access to some uh, of their members they, they are outside they might be operating but how is it still going where he is the mastermind yeah there have been cases when you know this underworld uh, dons even if they were out of the country there have been cases yeah. if uh, say taud or his man chota shakil if they were based in dubai and they would get bumped up you know yeah. people here in bombay yeah. businessman or bollywood people so this is possible because you know their network is very huge so mm -hmm. they they use their network and and these gangsters are they operate cross border they are if they are not confined to here so yeah. it has been possible but here the case is little different because bishnoi is inside jail yeah he is not located somewhere outside country he is not in dubai or bangkok or somewhere else and operating from there daud and chota shakil and and likewise other gangsters these dons they were outside the country yeah. and they, they were, were at least from free to open yeah they free yeah. free free at least from, from wherever they yeah. operated but here this man is inside the exactly. jail and so so it it really surprises us and it's shocking it's shocking that you know how can he use utilize his network while being inside the jail who is providing him information who is helping him out yeah. to reach to reach out to his uh, you know hard killers and and here we to we should not forget the weapon that you they used it was a jigna uh, pistols mm -hmm. which are very very sophisticated and these are available mostly uh, in turkey these are made in turkey so this turkish pistol which is very costly which is not easily available which is not easily available in the market open market mm -hmm. it's not like any katta that you go and buy and you can so get even that. in black market it's very difficult so that the same jigna uh, uh, pistol was used to kill atikamat they are in up and the same because this these reports have come yeah. and at the same pistol was used here to kill uh, siddiqui mm -hmm. baba siddiqui so who is providing who is providing these gangsters these sophisticated weapons which are very costly which are not easily available so this is the this raises question so who is behind it who is giving them okay. making this the support, support system for them to make yeah so there, so, so there, there, there must be a support yeah. system there must be a kind of channel which they, these gangsters utilize mm -hmm. and that they can easily you know get people bumped yeah. off so 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 that also needs to be explored and uh, brought out and th this can be brought out only through the agencies nobody else and also what is the thing about our law enforcement like you previously mentioned that even uh, somebody who had so much influence baba siddiqui and also salman khan was access to so many resources and is wealthy who has so much security around him they are still being targeted and uh, they could get killed in broad daylight uh, in such a public space what does it tell what message is it sending to the people especially in bombay yeah so that shows the weakness of the agencies because uh, you know as you rightly said that these were these are very influential people and they have huge resources because baba siddiqui in times of india report only the other day one uh, person who is in the state business he guessed that he was worth 15000 crore that was the worth of baba siddiqui now just imagine a man with 15000 crore and he can he was bumped off in yeah. a busy street outside his office it was not even mid of middle of the night it was just early evening and he was just going out from his office to home and he was just riding going to board his car and that was he was killed so it was a busy place over there yeah. and so and despite having his own security i mean the police had provided yeah. him security his son had his security and and despite all that they could manage and one of those killers he could manage to escape also 
Yeah. So, so the, the kind of things that they used, you know, whether the, it was crackers, it is said that they, they bust the crackers and in, in confusion, there was smoke, there was noise. And in confusion, one of them escaped, two were caught and uh, and the, the, the man, he was killed. So, but, uh, but agencies which are uh, supposed to protect these people, they, they should know. They should know that how to protect, you know, the the, the, the people who are who are seeking their protection. So they should know. They they, they will have to uh, do some, uh, you know, soul searching yeah. and and find out the loopholes. Where did where was the lapse done? Where was the lapse which caused this to happen? And uh, and there has to be a review. And I think that the review of all those important people, those who have been provided security. This needs to be done. Otherwise, anybody can be killed. So exactly, easily. Yeah. Also, uh, talking about the threats to Munawar Farooqi, uh, we spoke about it. And also, in the tweet, uh, uh, sorry, in the Facebook post that was there, there were words like Jai Shri Ram, those things. Does it imply that Vishnui Kyang is trying to form an image of being a very let uh, fight and Hindu underworld gang are they trying to do that by also uh, be, taking into place yeah the, this could be this purpose. could be a deliberate attempt this could be a deliberate attempt to criminalize the whole issue because a murder is murder murder okay. is a criminal criminal has no religion he could be Hindu Muslim but but often these criminals use religion hmm. so by uttering and writing Jashi Ram he is trying to say that perhaps he is uh, is savior of Hinduism, or he is with with the Hindu. And since he Manohar or uh, Sal Salman or uh, or Faruqi yeah. or uh, Siddiqui happen to be Muslim, so we are targeting them. But it's not like that. Who was uh, Musawala? Was Musawala a Muslim? He was a Sikh. Yeah. <laughs> so so the criminals don't have religion. This is a tactic basically they use, and it's an attempt to criminalize. And and get sympathy, maybe yeah. to get sympathy from the majority community, some of them, not all of them, because after all, nobody loves criminals. Yeah. But it's, it's like Muslim. the classic way of how uh, under on these gangsters operated back when Dawood then was there. I think the Chota Ranjan and Dawood, that's yeah. how they split based on religion. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so, and, so Chota yeah. Ranjan was called Hindu uh, gangster or yeah. Hindu underworld, and Dawood was Muslim underworld. But after all, we should not forget that once upon a time they were friends. They were very yeah, close. They were close. And they split. And yeah. they split. So so they were brothers in in not only crime. arms, brothers in crime. Yeah. So, so so they they are basically brothers and sisters in crime. So uh, this is our uh, desperate attempt to polarize and kind of get maybe he he was trying to get some sympathy by saying that you know he is uttering Jai Shri Ram. Yeah. And, and getting some sympathy from the majority community. But a uh, lot of people and most of them, they understand that yeah. the criminal cannot be of anybody, any religion. He he is a criminal and criminal, you know, he has no religion and he has no sympathy for anyone else, anyone, whether of his religion or the, some, some other religion. So that issue uh, is a minor issue, but uh, after all, I again, we can hope that you know the, the agencies will have a look at that also. Also, the last thing that I want to ask is uh, how is the nexus of organized crime working today? I mean, this whole uh, underworld gangster image had stopped, especially in Bombay, it had stopped a while ago, and now it seems like it's happening all over again. And it's very classic the way the murder happened yeah. uh, during a Durga Puja. Uh, Dasara uh, Pandal, if I'm not yeah, wrong. Yeah, it was Dasara. Yeah. yeah. And a very classic way of killing the politician, a very influential person. What does it say? Is the history repeating itself? Our Bishnoi gang is becoming the new... Are they trying to be the new underworld of Bombay? What is it? I, I think that uh, this, has, this is very perturbing and disturbing, uh, you know, uh, uh, episode that has happened, it has certainly brought back the memories of the 90s when the gangsters were quite active and they would get killed people, you know, easily. Uh, because, as you rightly said, that Bombay has been 
quite free from okay there, there have been crimes always yeah. a big city like bombay does see crimes but not like this you know a man in central man getting a politician being killed so brutally uh, in the you know when the people are around him and the, the, he, he was killed so this has brought memories of those dark days when the gangsters were very very active so so the, back in the 90s we all know that, that, that it was obviously very sad scenario yeah. that you had gangster from uh, different gangs and they operating from in india within india outside india here bombay also and bollywood especially music directors producers they would get you know extortion calls yeah and a lot of uh, deals were settled yeah. without telling the police yeah. and and when it became too much for them to be or then they would approach cops and then tell them i am getting threatening calls so but these things are not happening quite often here for quite some long time so this is episode that happened the other day it has really shocked everyone those who had forgotten almost forgotten those yeah. dark days those those memories have come back again that are we again in another phase of this kind of yeah. this chapter where you know the the, the 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 gangsters can get people killed on the busiest street so these memories have really come back thank you thank you so much sir okay it's my my pleasure nice okay bye take care bye sir thank you